Okay, guys, so today we are solving our own beautiful oil man calculus question. I've been kind of inspired to solve by this Black Pen Red Pen's episode. By the way, Black Pen Red Pen, you're just, you know, such a G. I love you. <laughs> but anyway, let's get straight to the business. We are supposed to evaluate the integral as you know, from 0 to t of limit as h approaches 0 of this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x plus h all to the power of n all over n factorial minus the same looking series but with x plus h replaced with just an x everything divided by the limit as y approaches h of y squared minus h squared all over double y minus h and then this entire limit multiplied by a sine of x over there and that's all with respect 2x. So what would I like to start with here? Well, it would be a nice idea to go on and, you know, evaluate this limit there, you know, just <laughs> to kind of know what we are integrating in the first place. So let's try and do it. We would like to evaluate this thing. So let me maybe try and copy this entire guy somewhere, let's say here, just so I have a little bit more space to operate on there. Lovely. So first of all, what are those sums as n goes from zero to infinity of x plus a to the n over n factorial? Well, if you remember something from the Taylor series class, a class you probably um, took in calculus, well, you should remember the Taylor series expansion of e to the power of x, which was e to the power of x equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power of 3 over 3 factorial and it just, you know, goes on to infinity. And this thing was actually the same thing as saying that e to the x is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the power of n divided by n factorial. Okay, well, that's pretty awesome because this is exactly the thing we've got right over here in our limit. So we can just, you know, go on and nicely replace this thing with just an e to the power of x term. But now, well, what was with this um, sum? Well, the same thing, but with x replaced to x, with replaced with x plus an h. Well, there's pretty much the same thing as just saying that we're rising e to the power of x plus h and then, you know, doing this Taylor series approximation of that kind of a you know, function which is going to be just equal to 1 plus, well, x plus and h plus x plus h to the power 2 over 2 factorial. Well, the entire infinite sum once again, but with x replaced 2 x plus h, so just the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x plus h over n factorial and then, the, and then x plus h to the power of an n. So we just go on and nicely replace this stuff there with e to the power of x plus an h. Lovely. So now let's go on and check out the denominator. That's going to be the limit as y approaches h of y squared minus h squared 2 times y minus h. So let's let me write it somewhere here. Let's say limit as y approaches h of y squared minus h squared all over double y minus h. Okay, so well, first of all, we know that as y approaches uh, h, this entire fraction will approach the 0 over 0 situation as well y squared is going to just become an h squared and this y here is going to become an h. So we're going to be sub subtracting um, h squared from h squared in the numerator and h from h in the denominator. So well, this um, is a perfect place to use the L'Hopital's rule. So we can just go on and nicely take the derivative with respect to y of both the denominator and the numerator and then take the limit of it as y approaches h, get in the limit as y approaches h of, well, the derivative of y squared minus h squared is just gonna be two times y, cause the derivative of y of h squared is just gonna be a zero, is just a constant with respect to y. And then the derivative of two times y minus h is two times y minus two times h, and then der and the derivative, which is just gonna be two, cause once again, 2h is just a constant. And so it's going to be 2y over 2, which is just the limit as well, h approaches, as y approaches h of just a y, which is equal to an h. Pretty lovely. So we can rewrite this entire thing, this entire limit there, as a limit as h approaches, as h approaches 0 of e to the power of x plus h minus e to the power of x, everything divided by an h. But well, this is just the definition 
of the derivative for e to the power of x because well as you probably should know from calculus whenever we have a function let's say f of x then the derivative of x is going to be then the derivative of f is going to be equal to the limit to the limit as some kind of an h approaches zero of f uh, evaluated at x plus that h minus f of x everything divided by that h which is just well the difference here by how much our function value increased by increasing the x argument by a small large a small nudge compared to how much that nudge was yeah so the rate of change of our function and so this thing right there is just going to be equal to the derivative of e to the x with respect to x which is just equal to e to the x pretty smoothly and so we now see that this entire awful looking integral we had in the first place there is just gonna nicely become an integral oh that's an awful looking integral sign from 0 to a t of e to the x multiplied by a sine of x dx because we had this sine of x here at the very end of this problem yeah so well this thing is something we can without a problem tackle without a single problem tackle using integration by pass technique so let me maybe set this e to the x to be my u and this sine of x might be to, to be my dv now what i'm gonna get is well, that's going to be e to the power of x multiplied by the antiderivative of sine of x, which is just going to be negative cosine of x. So it's going to be negative e to the x cosine of x, everything between 0 and a t, and then minus the integral between 0 and a t and a t of e to the power of x, which is its own derivative, multiplied by the cosine of x, negative cosine of x. So I'm just going to be plus this integral of e to the x sometimes cosine of x dx but now well what is e to the x um, cosine of x between 0 and a t with a negative sign well that's just going to be negative e to the t cosine of t as x is a t and just a negative 1 when t is uh, 0 when x is a 0 so we can rewrite this entire thing as pretty nicely just negative e to the t cosine of t plus a one and then plus well how can we rewrite this integral there well we can use integration by parts again so let me once again set the exponential to, my, to be my u and the trig to be my dv and now what we are gonna get is just e to the x multiplied by a positive sine of x between 0 and a t and then minus the integral from 0 to a t of e to the x sine of x dx but well what is this guy right there well this is the exact same thing that we started with in the first place so we kind of made a circle as we always do when <laughs> dealing with just trick functions and well um i mean trick functions and exponential functions when integrating them using the uh, integration by pass technique and so we can just you know subtract this thing from both sides of the equation and then divide everything by two but first of all what is this e to the x sine of x between zero and a t well as x at t this thing is going to be e to the t sine of t but as x is a zero the sine of zero is going to be zero so it's just going to be well a zero and so we can write this entire thing mm saying that double the integral between 0 and a t of e to the x sine of x dx is going to be equal to negative e to the power of t cosine of t plus e to the power of t sine of t plus a1 and I well probably should have written it like this and now just nicely dividing everything by a factor of 2 I can move it upwards <laughs> <laughs> make this beautiful line and then move this to to the right hand side of the equation getting that our beautiful integral is equal to negative e to the t cosine of t plus e to the t sine of t plus one everything divided by two and so we can move this into anything and then just conclude our problem saying that this beautiful 
awfully looking <laughs> integral we had at the very beginning is just lovely equal to e to the t cosine of t plus e to the t sine of t plus one all over two. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Well, if you did, then like and subscribe not to miss out on any stuff. I'm gonna be posting the future and actually posting every single day. So there is a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to miss out on. <sighs> hope you guys enjoyed it and see you the next one. Bye.